Invariably, whenever someone is entering the field of programming, the same question comes up over and over and over. You can count on it like clockwork. And that question is, what programming language do I learn? I mean, after all, there are a lot of choices out there. We've talked about high-level versus low-level languages and how high-level languages break down into scripting languages versus compiled languages. Well, you got to ask yourself, hey, what one of those programming languages or which of the collection of those programming languages do I want to learn? Because the simple fact of the matter is you can't learn them all. As nice as it would be if there was just two choices, a red, blue, or a blue pill that you get to choose for programming languages, there's way more than that. Here is the Wikipedia page for the list of programming languages, and I'm just going to scroll down here a little bit and let me know when you are overwhelmed, because I already am. This is a lot of choices. There's a lot of different languages out there. They do a lot of different things, and sometimes there's good reasons for all these different programming languages. Many of them are very highly specialized. They do lots of different things. Uh, they break out. Here's the list of programming languages by type on another Wikipedia page. It's still really too big of a list. It's too long. We've got array languages, compiled languages, data flow languages, embedded languages, which breaks down into a whole bunch of different kind. How do we make sense of all of these different choices, all of these different programming languages that are out there? Well, in this video, I would like to break them down into a few general categories for you based on what field they're used in as opposed to their structure or style so that we can better understand what languages you might end up being interested in depending on what field you get into. Those categories that I've chosen somewhat arbitrarily, there's no reference guide out there that lists these, I've simply made these up for the purposes of this video, are application development, which is the development of actual applications or programs that get distributed to and run on the devices that they are developed for. This is a video game or a word processing application or a music player that's playing on your desktop, right? These are applications. The code is compiled into a binary. That binary is downloaded or shipped on a DVD or somehow given to you, and, and then you execute that on your device. Web development is just like it sounds like, developing web pages and applications that run inside of a web browser. It has its own unique challenges, and consequently, it has its own unique approach to programming languages. Database programming, well, that's exactly what it sounds like. How do you program and administer databases both the data that goes into and out of those databases, as well as the security and other features that surround those databases. Task scripting is all about creating simple task scripts that perform operations on a computer. Maybe it copies files, maybe it's a, a scheduler so that it sends out an email and an automated routine. Those kind of simple ideas are done with scripting. Network programming is for network devices. Think routers, modems, firewalls, these kind of devices. So you can program those devices using a variety of programming languages. Machine and process control is really kind of a specific and interesting field, and we won't get to talk a lot about it, but most factory machines these days are programmed. They run in an automated fashion. Someone has to sit down and type up the code that tells that machine how to assemble or how to perform whatever mechanical operation it's performing. And then lastly, a really growing field, really important growing field, is statistical analysis. This is used in a wide variety of industries to start to understand all of this data that we are now collecting across all of our devices. So with that in mind, let's take a look at some of the programming languages that we might use across these different categories. In application programming, remember these are compiled applications, you're going to run into, well, just about any programming language can be used. But some of the more popular modern alternatives are C Sharp and Java. Kotlin, which is a Java offshoot, is used for programming Android devices, your Android phone or tablets, whereas Swift is used for Apple devices like iPads and iPhones. Python, which is going to come up a lot, is a really popular programming language choice. In fact, I would highly recommend it as one of the first programming languages that anybody learns, simply because it is so broadly available and broadly used. Another popular application development language that is really coming into its own in the past few years is JavaScript. And I say that with a little bit of surprise in my voice because traditionally JavaScript was part of the web development, what I call trifecta. JavaScript, HTML, and CSS are the three technologies that you absolutely have to know for programming web applications. Now, a lot of people, a lot of purists would take issue with me describing HTML and especially CSS as a programming language, but really that's just semantics. You need to understand that these are code coded languages that you need to know in order to perform web development. And that is also what is known as the front end of web development. It's the part that executes inside of a user's browser. You also need to do back end programming. And back end programming shares a lot of features with application programming. You're going to see C Sharp and Python come up again. Like I said, Python comes up a lot. But also PHP and Ruby are popular back end technologies. You need to use both of these things in combination with one another 
to develop web applications. For database programming, there's really one and only one language, and that is SQL. It stands for Structured Query Language. The differences come in from the different vendors that support and create SQL database applications. So that's Microsoft SQL Server, Oracle, MySQL, PostgreSQL. Those are all different applications, different vendors, and their implementation of SQL is a little bit different from each one. So largely SQL that's written for one of those vendors will translate to another but they're not exactly the same. And a more modern alternative is something called NoSQL, which stands for not only SQL. Uh, and I put an asterisk next to it because NoSQL is not a programming language at all. It's an implementation of a programming style. You can write NoSQL code in C Sharp, you can write in C++, you can write it in Java, JavaScript, Python, any of the above languages really can support NoSQL, but it's an alternative approach to programming databases. Task scripting is another wide field and it comes up a lot. Most programmers will have some form of scripting language in their toolkit that they know how to use and that's going to include PowerShell, kind of the most popular option right now inside of Windows. In Linux you're going to run into Bash a lot. Perl and Lua are a couple of lesser used options but still pretty popular and still used a lot out there. And they allow you again to perform simple small tasks. They're not compiled languages, not compiled applications. They're just simple straightforward task automation or scheduling. Network programming is another vendor specific one like databases. The two big ones, Cisco and Juniper, use iOS and Junos OS. But once again, Python shows up here as well. Most network devices, modern network devices, support a lot of Python programming in their development. Another reason to learn Python programming. It can be used in a wide variety of places. Machine and process control really exists in a field all of its own. For machine and process control, you need to understand things like structured text and function block diagrams, really specific engineering style programming that's all done on something known as a PLC, a programmable logic controller. And this is the kind of programming that you can't really learn on your own. It's going to require a degree in engineering. It's going to require very specific professional training on the machines and that you need to program in the language that those machines understand and use. But it's out there. It is a way to use coding and programming skills. At the end of the day, a lot of the challenges that you face programming those machines are the same challenges that any program would face across any of this. And like I mentioned, statistical analysis is a really growing field, a way to identify patterns in data or learn new insights from the data that you're gathering and collecting. To do statistical analysis programming, you're probably also going to need some formal education in statistics. But alongside that, you're going to learn how to use software like R or SAS. Uh, MATLAB, and again, Python. Python is used popularly for stat programming and, and doing statistical analysis, so another great place that Python shows up and is a popular choice. All of these languages, to some extent or another, can be used across many different categories that I've identified here. We're not limited to just doing one thing with one language in one area. For instance, like we saw with Python or C Sharp, languages can show up in a lot of different places to accomplish a lot of different goals. There's also a lot of vendor-specific things that you run into, particularly with database programming and network programming, where you simply need to learn that vendor's programming language or that vendor's tools if you want to use it. What you should take away from all of this is that there are a lot of options and a lot of choices, and you don't need to limit or focus yourself on one or two particular items on this list. You can start with one and grow from there, see where your career and where your interests take you, and you can learn a lot of different things. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.